I think, are at Fairburn Inns. Well, we're definitely at Fairburn Inns. However, I don't know if I'm on the path of the trail or just utterly lost. It's been about 45 minutes trying to find my location. Yeah. Fun adventures and all that. So, why am I recording this? We'll start with that. We've been doing our photography now for about a year. The thing is though, I am actually an art and design teacher. It kind of makes sense to push both my photography and my teaching further and by embracing the uncomfortableness of recording myself for YouTube tutorials. Because that way I learn, my students learn, and it helps push me further. It gives me that incentive to constantly keep on improving day by day. Now, I've come to Fairman Inns to take some wildlife photography. That's the intention, anyway. But disclaimer, I'm in no way a wildlife photographer. This is my first ever attempt. I'm aware that you need a high ISO, very fast shutter speed, f-stop range in between f4.5 and f9 if you're lucky, I suppose. But that's about it. I know nothing about animals, nothing about birds. But what I do know is they are beautiful creatures full of colour and full of nature. And what I kind of wanted to do this year with my photography is add more colour because I love landscapes, I love the adventure, I love planning and the fact that we can do it as a family. If you do want to have a look at my portfolio, have a look for Photography Mama on Instagram. But I kind of just wanted to get more colour, more vibrancy in my photography. Because it seems I've got better at my technique, but in doing that, I've lost that. I don't even know how to put it. Kapow! Yeah, I've lost the kapow because what I tend to really enjoy about photography is contrast, clarity, and colour. Not oversaturation, but beautiful colours. And Maybe it's just the autumn dip because there's a lot of beautiful colours, however we are at the end of autumn now so I've kind of seen the beauty. Um, should we do intros? So I'm Paige, Paige Violet Wilson McPhillips. I've been doing photography now for years, 10 years. I feel so old. However, I've never really pushed it. I've enjoyed it as a hobby. Enjoyed traveling, taking photographs, but it's, it's never taken center stage. I've always wanted to kind of be better at everything else but photography, because photography kind of came naturally. However, I kind of realized, well, that's stupid in some ways, because if I'm good at photography, no, we're never best. I think well, my question is, is anyone really the best at photography for how techniques and technical advances kind of come up pretty much daily almost. But stop overcomplicating things and just push it further. So a year ago I started Photography Mama, my Instagram blog. I didn't expect it to grow as much as it has done. That's what I quite like about it. I've not set out for it to grow, it's just grown. And the way I maintain Photography Mama is by going out every week as a family, me, my partner and our daughter Grace, and on occasion my younger sister Aaliyah who's nine. Just getting in the car, packing a lunch and getting out there. Feeling the fresh air, the adventure, the challenge in some weather conditions. 
And having a story behind the photographs we got to take was the best feeling in the world. And just before I start to take pictures, because I don't have a tripod with me and I don't have a spare camera with me, I can't vlog and take photographs of good quality at the same time. Because I want to show you something to you that's worthwhile and quite inspiring if you want to give it a try. I'm going to have to stop. Be back. Hello again. So I've had to move because they were clearly professional twitchers and setting up for the day. And slightly intimidating. I kind of just sat there in the corner with my camera been like, oh, okay. Very knowledgeable though. Right, so what I wanted to get on with, make sure there's no one else. I don't quite fancy having to talk in front of a camera in front of loads of people. Okay, so I made some notes last night which were guided by research and my fab partner on how to do wildlife photography because as I mentioned earlier, I am not a wildlife photographer, never had any intention of being, the only things I kind of like to photograph is owls and deers and dogs. However. I do, sorry if I'm a bit vacant, I'm trying to find a composition make sure I don't miss out whilst talking. I do enjoy that break, that time to just sit down, wait, be patient and watch. And you might not get that composition, but you might, and it might be an absolutely fabulous once in a lifetime shot which is worth it however it is completely and utterly such a different setup to landscape photography landscape photography you can have quite a high f stop because you've got the composition already there and it's not moving you your shutter speed depending on what you want to capture can be high and quite quick and if you want to do long exposure, you can, although you use a tripod. But with wildlife photography, your subject's moving, doesn't know you're taking a photograph. It's not going to sit there and sit still and go, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll sit here for you and wait. It's going to do its own thing unapologetically. So the notes I've written are, you'll probably need a high ISO depending on the weather conditions and the light. However, with a higher ISO becomes more noise. So unless the lens you're using has VR, be careful because noise isn't a bad subject. I mean, that's how camera started off back in the day. We had noise, noise can be quite beautiful and authentic, but it can also lose the clarity within the subject you're trying to shoot. I've written a diagram which most cameras, DSLR cameras, unless you're using a bridge or your iPhone or any other phone, this might be different. And basically, if you go too close to a plus, you're letting in too much light. If you go too close to a minus, you're letting in not enough light. I tend to sit I prefer it closer to the too dark than the too light because I tend to find when editing photographs it captures a lot more detail. Below the f-stop the more light you're going to let in but it is a bit of a balancing act. I tend to sit with wildlife photography between 5.6 to about 7 depending on the conditions. Very 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 far shutter speed. Like, I'm currently on 1 over 3,200 of a second to try and get that movement and I'm still getting blurred wings so I might need to go a bit faster. So if you're going to do it, have a play around and remember you might not get that best photograph but enjoy it, live it. Some of the best wildlife photographers who I've watched on YouTube 
they spend hours just sitting and waiting but the compositions and the images they get from that are absolutely outstanding and inspirational so it is worth it and if you've got the time I would definitely recommend it and I'm gonna go take some pictures bye for now hello again so I happen to take 782 images a lot and what I've done is I've condensed them down to the six that I've edited so that you don't have to look through all 700 and I'm going to import all of these now what? okay so these are the six which I have chosen as my best although I was actually quite impressed quite a few of them came out far better than I thought they were going to so I was a happy bunny okay go down to here for full screen I'll show you them and I'm just going to expand this There's an image here which I absolutely love and I'm so proud of myself for being in the right place at the right time. So here's the first one. Second. A robin. Now I'm no twitcher, so I have no idea what most of these birds are. However, I do know that's a robin. And a cheeky squirrel. Pheasant. And you might not be able to see this one. I'm pretty sure these next two might be the same. Yes, they are. However, if I zoom in here, there's this little cutie pie just tied in there. And I sat there for about 45 minutes waiting for them to stick their head up. And most of the time, I was just sat there watching his bottom as he ate. Or she ate. However, it was worth it because there is a final edit which I've already gone through and I did these but I want to show you guys I suppose my own personal approach to editing my own photographs because each photographer will distinguish their own style and have their own preferences I like colour, contrast, clarity and the story behind the photograph whereas some photographers like harmony behind their photographs each to their own. Okay, so we'll start with this one. And what we're going to do is just tidy up a slight bit. And first of all, so switch from library to develop. And I'm going to crop it to the desired size. I usually go four by five. However, each of own. Four by five usually is the one that YouTube will take. Um, not YouTube, sorry, Instagram. And I think I'm going to go by real thirds. Within this composition. Yes, done. If you move to the right, you can see this menu here. And that's essentially the broken down options for how you can edit your photograph. If you've got the top, you've got colour or black and white. Another way to turn a photograph into black and white is if you go down to saturation, drag this down and the saturation will give you that black and white authenticity. If you double click, it will take you back to zero. Okay, so exposure. Probably just about right, we'll take it there. So slightly above, I quite like the green, slightly on the old contrast. I am very fond of contrast, always have been. So we'll take it to 20. If you'd like to see the finished edits, and you can see it with the basket removed. Take a look, as I mentioned earlier whilst out, at my Instagram photography mama. 
highlight. Now I don't want the highlights completely brought down, however the bird feeder here is slightly intrusive to the eye. Shadows. Slightly bring up the clarity and vibrance. Now, because we're using a high ISO with a low f stop, so I can quite a lot of noise. If I go into this, it's not too bad actually. The quality isn't as affected as I thought it might be because the lighting permitted it. But you can see there's a slight grain behind it. So we'll go to sharpening. And then masking, so that's going to smooth it out, take away that grain. See it in this little box here, detail. And then luminance to help. So it's making the bird stand out slightly more without that kind of neglection to the grain. Okay, so I'm not going to edit all of these photographs because the pattern I tend to go through tends to be quite routine and doesn't vary quite as much. So I'm going to take it over to the deer. I'm calling Herbert. Let me name Herbert. Now, well, it's quite a lot, but I want to focus in on the deer. I want to show the deer's presence whilst also showing the viewer the deer is in its natural habitat and it is wild and not a captured animal. So I'm going to make use of the reflections within the water, but create a letterbox crop. Now I'd like it slightly warmer. Exposure, there we are. Contrast. Clarity. Saturation. Darker. Now I'm gonna yeah, use the right one, green. And then once again I'm going to visit the sharpening. And there we have it. If you'd like to see all six images edited and complete and uploaded, please take this opportunity to visit Photography Mama, my Instagram account. And if you've got any questions, then fab, answer away, and I'll be more than happy to answer. Have a lovely day. Bye.